platform. Knowledge. Viele Möglichkeiten. Connection. Einfach ist die Dinge. Psychologie. Le travail. Connect. Conocimiento. Network. Eine tolle Hilfe. Technologie. Queer. People. Connection. Communication. Decentralisation. Information. Global Information. Google. Facebook. WhatsApp. <laughs> Corruption. Memes. Darknet. Help. Virus. Internet za mene revolucije. C'è la connectività totale per me. Ci passo veramente, veramente tanto tempo. Ja, in uh, smula o hengi? Io sto praticamente connectato il tempo intero. Talvez la metà delle ore che sto despierto. Dal mattino finché non vado a letto. C'è mai mare delle opportunità e è che non ho tempo per un nemico. Internet è che è un mio amico di Vasile. Én hihetetlen, de 77 éves koromban a napi életem legfontosabb része. Az internet is in der Hauptsache auch für Menschen, die allein stehen sind. Nakte wa daranai mono des. Da internet se ma pa katia chapsa nula. Ja, das eigentlich nicht braucht. No, homikul märkan siis ikka esimese asja, ma ikkagi vaatan telefoni, vaatan, kas keegi on midagi ööselt kirjutanud või ma ei tea, kui palju Instagramis pilt on laike saanud. Me llegan todo el tiempo, las notificaciones de las redes sociales, si necesito buscar algo, lo primero que hago es agarrar mi celular para entrar al buscador. Internet, si fallo a cabo, no es seguro, que hubo que hacer bastante chereza, no, 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 au cours de 50 ans, a su battre en brèche les distances entre les humains. Il ouvre une nouvelle frontière économique pour eux. Internet est une opportunité de voir les gens qui ont été mis en Durant la crise de Covid-19, vous avez Internet pour beaucoup de choses. Le Covid, Internet n'a pas été fait, mais... Fondamentalement pour travailler. Pour prendre une cerveau avec mes amis. Pour m'informer. Et aussi pour quelque chose d'entretenement. Et pour offrir des choses de l'apprentissage et des choses que tu as déjà fait avant. Basiquement, tout ce que je pourrais faire de fora de casa maintenant est sur Internet. Radila sam se u vrijeme kada nije bilo interneta i dolazak interneta je nešto apsolutno fantastično. Internet nije ku ajala pilan banam tu ne kreitas nije. Ja kuva na internet et kuva ho gute na gumbis. To get there, we needed the bare minimum, building a computer. Among the first computers are the ABC, the Zuse 3 and the Harvard Mark I. And as you can see, they probably wouldn't have fitted in your office. After World War II, to prevent new enemy airstrikes, the US Army pours a colossal budget into the development of a radar system network across the whole US territory. This so-called SAGE network is made of 22 dispersed control centers, each center containing a computer. These computers are all connected through dedicated telephone lines. SAGE is only semi-automatic because the data transmission relies on human operators. The first modems appear at this time, for example the Bell 101 that is conceived for use in the SAGE network. Furthering the idea of a decentralized network, less vulnerable to enemy attacks, the US Army develops ARPANET based on the SAGE network. This means that in the 1960s, the Americans are already looking into packet switching data transmission. On October 29, 1969, a portion of the ARPANET is used to send the first computer message. UCLA tries to send the word login to Stanford. They succeed in transmitting the L and the O, but then the system crashes. An hour later, they successfully send login. Not much later in France, Charles de Gaulle initiates what would become the Cyclade project. Louis Poussin and the Cyclade team improve some aspects of the packet switching. These advancements were going to be paramount for the next steps of this story. Unfortunately for France, the project is abandoned. 
The progress made by Louis Poussin inspires two American researchers towards finding the holy grail of data transmission. The TCPIP protocol, created in 1974 by Bob Kahn and Vince Cerf. Hello, my name is Vince Cerf. I'm one of Google's vice presidents and I'm also one of the inventors of the internet. Some people wonder, how did this happen? You know, what, did we just wake up one morning and say, let's build an internet? We made a very successful network that was called the ARPANET. We designed and built all those networks and then we said, how are we going to connect them together and make it look like it's all one net? That was the internet problem and my partner, Bob Kahn and I, designed the solution to that problem and by 1983, eight years later, it was possible for us to turn the internet on in an operational way. From then on, everything goes really fast. Several applications capable of browsing internet content come to life, among them Gopher. And of course, the World Wide Web, conceived at CERN by Sir Tim Berners-Lee and Robert Caillot, who developed the HTTP protocol. Not long after, Mosaic is the first WWW browser to display pictures from the internet. And we're not going to lie, a good part of them are pornographic. But it's a fact that it helps the development of the internet. The internet just took off at that point. Uh, lots and lots of users pouring an enormous amount of content into the network using the World Wide Web and the hypertext markup protocols. And as a result of that, there was so much information, nobody could find anything, and that meant that we needed to build search engines. During the 90s, quite a few search engines flourish. Archie, Yahoo, Lycus, Alta Vista, and in 1998, Google quickly prevails as the most used search engine. At the same time, Internet's usage blows up and its users diversify. The first online sale takes place in 1994, as an album from Sting is bought via the website netmarket.com. It is the first online secure transaction. E-commerce quickly becomes a must, with platforms such as eBay, Alibaba and of course Amazon, which are all part of the most important companies of the sector. Today, Internet represents 15% of the global economy. Over the years, Internet also developed in a multitude of directions that changed many industries. Let's back up for a bit. Classmates.com is the first social network in 1996. MSN Messenger, MySpace, Facebook, we all know how they've changed the way we communicate today. In 1999, Napster is a pioneer in digital media consumption and in peer-to-peer -peer sharing. On the one hand, it changes the landscape of the music and video industry, leading to the settlement of legal paying streaming services. On the other hand, it ignites under the radar file sharing between users, which leads to the upbringing of BitTorrent. The idea of anonymizing online communication to avoid being spied on leads to anonymous browsers like Tor, the Onion Router, but also to encrypted exchanges of information using the blockchain technology, which is the secure system behind Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Of course, in order to get there, the tools needed to access the internet had to get smaller and smaller until they got into our pockets. And the data transmission had to evolve whether in accessibility or in speed. No, 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 Penso, non so proprio sicuro che ci sia una grossa squadra che riesce a gestire e fa partire un motore che ormai riguarda tutto il mondo. A ah, io non so esattamente come internet funziona, ma so che è una esperienza che mi ha fatto. Ah, c'è una città o un mercato che vuole mostrare net? Pues la verdad es que no lo sé, mi immagino che la base starà in Stati Uniti. Pleo non mi so. Στέλνουμε τα σήματα μέσω δορυφόρων και τηλεφωνικών εταιριών και έτσι μεταφέρεται η πληροφορία. Η ίντερνετ των τιατοκόνεϊδεν ύχτενε βέρκο. Σε λίγη τα πιένεμπια βέρκο για ύχτενε. 
Mislim da smo povezani preko impulsa telefonskih. Presumo que existam grandes centros onde toda a informação esteja armazenada, com discos rígidos gigantescos. Dumpa, Nubari, Ibjong, Ibjong. Z tego, co wiem, są to serwery połączone ze sobą, gdzie znajdują się informacje i są to serwery, serwery HTTP, dlatego e, mamy HTTP przed naszym www. Access Point on yhdistetty taas operaattorin koneeseen ja operaattorit ovat keskenään taas yhteydessä toisiinsa ja viestit kulkevat sitten näiden tietokoneiden välillä niin, että niitä reititetään erityisesti protokollalla, joka joka pystyy kysymään osoitteita. Ja tämän päällä sitten toimivat erilaiset sovellukset, niin kuin sähköposti ja web ja WhatsApp ja kaikki mahdolliset muut. Jere a pratiquement tout dit, mais on va remettre tout ça dans l'ordre. Internet doit se comprendre en trois couches. Les infrastructures, les protocoles et les applications et contenus. Les infrastructures. Internet n'est pas quelque part dans les nuages. Le cloud, comme à peu près tout le reste, et sur terre et surtout sous l'eau. Internet est un réseau de réseaux, d'ordinateurs et de serveurs reliés entre eux par des câbles. Et même lorsque vous utilisez votre smartphone, l'antenne qui capte le signal 4G est reliée à un serveur par des câbles. Nous sommes là dans la couche physique. Les protocoles. Il existe plusieurs types de protocoles. SMTP, DNS, FTP et bien sûr le plus connu, le TCP-IP. Le rôle des protocoles est de permettre aux ordinateurs et aux serveurs de communiquer entre eux en parlant la même langue. C'est la deuxième couche sans laquelle il serait impossible de transporter et d'échanger des données. C'est un peu comme si dans un tuyau il se baladait des 0 et des 1 sans qu'on sache vraiment de quoi il s'agit. Nous sommes là dans la couche du transport. Les applications et contenus. Les applications rendent possible l'accès au contenu mis à disposition sur Internet, comme par exemple le World Wide Web, la messagerie, euh, les vidéos que l'on peut voir en direct sur Internet. En résumé, trois couches, les infrastructures, les protocoles, les applications et contenus. Physique, transport, applications et contenus. Yeah. On va prendre un exemple concret. Vous êtes sur Google, vous tapez votre requête, vous l'envoyez, et là, qu'est-ce qui se passe Le navigateur va formater la requête pour la rendre compatible avec le protocole. Cette requête est alors transmise à un serveur de Google grâce au protocole, dans ce cas-ci, HTTP et TCP/IP. Ce serveur cherche la réponse dans sa base de données, la renvoie grâce au même protocole sur votre ordinateur, et à ce moment-là, votre navigateur affiche la réponse de la requête sous la forme d'une page web, en quelques millisecondes. Et tout ça, c'est pas de la magie.